Welcome Harry Potter nerds. So today we are gonna go over a problem with a Harry Potter contact and it's called Ollivander's Inventory. First we are gonna look very closely at the text and the requirement. Of course write down our goals. What do we really want to solve here? And then we are gonna start solving the problem. Harry Potter and his friends are at Ollivander's with Ron, finally replacing Charlie's old broken wand. Hermione decides the best way to choose is by determining the minimum number of gold galleons needed to buy each non-evil wand of high power and age. Write a query to print the ID, age, coins needed and power of the wands that Ron's interested in. Okay, so already we have some information about the possible output we have to get here. So let's write it down. Output, what should we get? Write a query to print the ID. Okay, eight points needed and power. So we have to get four columns in the end, ID, age, coins needed and power of the ones that Ron's interested in. So what should the ones be? The minimum number of gold galleons. So we write context, minimum number of gold galleons to buy each non-evil wand of power and age. It says high power and age, but high is a bit misleading here. So we really want for any power and age, we want uh, the minimum number of gold galleons that you can get this wand with. And then afterwards, sort it in order of descending power. Okay, so order by power descending. If more than one wand has the same power, sort the results in order of descending age. Okay, age descending, if it's more. Okay, so the input column is the following. We have two two tables, wands and wands property. ID of the wand, code is the code of the wand, coins needed is the total number of gold galleons needed to buy the wand and power denotes the quality of the wand. The higher the power, the better the wand is. Okay. Wands property, wand is the ID of the wand, code is the code, coins needed and power. Wands property, so the code we have here, we can see already code is the same column as the column in wands. So we later have to connect these tables, wands and wands property, and we can see that we can do it through the column code because they both have the column code. Okay, the code is the code of the wand, age is the age of the wand, and is evil denotes whether the wand is good for the dark arts. And we remember from the beginning that we don't want is evil. And here's something also very important. The mapping between code and age is one one meaning that if there are two pairs, code 1, h1 and code 2, h2, then code 1 is not equal to code 2 and h1 is not equal to h2. Now what does that mean? The mapping between code and h is 1, 1. So we have code and h, right? Code in relationship to h. And we are just talking about the wands property table, right? About the second table here. So the relationship between code and h is one one. What does it mean? One, so if h, if there's a code for h, then there is exactly one code for each h. And for every code, there's exactly one h also the other way around. So to make it even more clear, we can look at some examples here. So here's the ones property table. And here we have the code one, the code two, the code three, the code four, the code five. And you will never see a double code in here or triple uh, times the one. The one will always just be one time. It will just be in this one row in the first row. And the code three will also just exist one time in this table. In the other table, on the other side, it can exist multiple times. And this is, it has to, I mean, this is the way that we will also order them. But here, it will only exist one time. And also the age will only exist one time. So if we have here an age of 40 and with a code of two, then you will not find the age 40 anywhere else in this in this one's property table again. And also you will not find the code two anywhere else in this one's property table. So that basically what it means that the mapping is one one in this table. So now we have here a sample output and we can see now what do we actually want to measure? We have the one's table here. So here you can see the wands table. Now what do we actually want to figure out? So first we want to figure out for each code and for each power, which is the minimum coins needed. So let's start with the first code here. 
it's the code for. So the codes usually exist multiple times in this once table. So you have the code for here and you have it again here and you have it again here and you have it again here. So now this, this code for is four times in this table. And now we look at the power. Is there any ones with the same power? This for code here has the power eight and it has the power five. Okay, so these are not the same powers. And here we have the power six. Okay, power six and power eight only exist one time. So they definitely get one row of their own in our results table. So here we have two times the power five. And now that is what it, what it was meant with minimum number of gold guardians to buy each non-evil ones. So now we have a situation where we have two times the same power five and five so let's take this one away so this is this is what we are interested in here the five and the five and now we have coins needed for this five and five and now we have to make a decision which one should we choose here to get for our final results table the one with 504 coins or with 7710 coins and we want to get the one with the minimum number of gold guardians needed which will be 504 as it is smaller than 7710. So this one will not appear in our results table. It will only be this want with the ID 10 with the code 4, the coins needed 504 and the power 5. And the other one will not appear in the results table. Okay, so let's try this with another example with the next example. And by the way, we also have to look for the code 4 in our wants property that it is not evil and is evil is zero. So the code for really was not evil. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. So we have the code three. Let's look at the wants property table. Code three is evil. So we don't have to regard this code at all because it is evil. It is not relevant for the results table. So three, 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 it's gonna be disregarded anyway. So let's look at the one. We have the code one here. Here we also have code one and is evil is zero. So it will happen, it will come into the results table. It is a non-evil want. So let's look at all the want contenders here. One, one, and that's it. They just have a two times the one and they both have different powers. So they will both go into our results table. And we have the ID five, power two, coins needed 6020 and age is 45. Okay, so how do we actually write this in a query now? Let's start at the wants property table because we can see here from the wants property, we have to join it in the end with the wants table, but we also only want to join with these rows that they have the minimum number of coins for each power. So let's start small now and first make a select star from wants property. Let's just get the wants property out here. Okay, so this is the columns for the wants property. We cannot see the columns here really, so it's better to write them out. What were the columns here? Code, age, and is evil. So we have the columns code, age, and is evil. Okay, so our output columns are ID, age, coins needed and power. So they are very different than what the columns are that we have right now, but we are just at the start. So we looked at the wants property table. We just gave out all the table with no conditions. Now we can remember in the beginning, it says we want to buy each non-evil one. So we can already make one condition where is evil equals to zero because that are the non-evil ones. So now we have 150 here and that should already be less now. Okay, so now we have only 100 left. So 50 ones apparently were evil and they were they are out of the selection now, which is good because we didn't don't want to have them in the output. So what else do we need in the output? So we need the ID, the age we have, the coins needed, and the power. So ID, coins needed and power are all columns that we will only get from the wand. So we have to join our wand property table somehow with the wands table, but we only, we don't want to join with all the columns, uh, with all the rows from the wands table, because some rows we don't want to have. If there is the same power and the same code, then we only want the row 
that has the minimum coins needed. So let's look at the wands table and then let's figure out which rows we actually want from the wands and which we don't want in the end in our query. And then if we, if we figured out the right rows that we want to have, then we can join it with the wands property and then we will have our result. So let's put this one aside for a moment. Non evil wands in the wands property. That is what we figured out so far. And let's select all now from the wands table. So what columns do we have here? ID, code, coins needed and power. ID, code, coins needed and power. From wands table. Okay, so now we only have, we have every row here and we have 726 and probably even more, but it's cutting it off here. So now, as we said, we want the rows that have the same power and the same code. We don't, we only want to have the ones with the minimum coins needed. So what we can do here is we can number the rows and the ones with the minimum of coins needed, we give them the number one. And if they have higher coins and the same power and the same code, then we give them the number two, number three, number four, and so on. And then in the end, when we join it with the non-evil ones, we only give out the number one from this rows. And then that way we disregarded every row that we didn't want. And then we only get the relevant rows. But how do we do that? So how we can do that is through a function. It's called row number. And it's a very useful function in a lot of scenarios. So you should definitely get familiar with that. Row number over. So let's make a easy example of row number so you can really understand what it means. So let's, row number always needs, row number is basically just giving every row in your table a number and it always needs an order by as you also put here down below in order by at your table. Same, it goes in the order by as a, in the row number function. And why it needs an order by? Because it has to know uh, which number should be number one and which number should be the last number and all in between. It has to know that, so we have to give it an order. So let's say order by the code, for example, because in the end, we also want for each code and each power, we want to order that. So we also write order by code in the table. Let's give that out now. Ah, of course, we write as row number. We also give this row, this column a name. Okay, so now we have a result. Now that, let's look at this result for a moment in Excel because we can get a better grasp on it here as we also have the columns standing here. Now we gave a row number to every row, one, two, three, four, five. And how is it ordered? Like who is number one? Number one is the code number one, and then it goes on and it just gives every row a number. Okay, so far that is not very useful for us. So we have to give more condition to this row number. So we, what we can also do in row number is we can partition our result set. So now we just gave all our rows. So if we have 700 rows, we get 700 numbers here now out in row number, but we can also partition our rows so that let's do it partition by the code. So what is going to happen now? It's going to start again counting from one. If there comes a new code, it counts again from one. So let's give that out. Okay, and now let's copy paste it again into Excel. Okay, so what you can, what we did here now. So you can see row number is not any, for every row, it doesn't give the same consecutive number, but it actually does here until seven. And why until seven? Because we have from code, we have seven times the same code here. One, 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 seven times. And so it gives the number until seven. And now, because we made a partition by code, now it starts again with a new partition and it starts again at one for the next code, the code number two, and it starts counting again. Now, what did we actually want it? We wanted for the same power, the one with the same power, we only wanted the minimum number of coins. So now we give every, every new code, we give a new number, but actually we want to give a new number 
to every new code in power in combination. So we can partition it again, as we can see here, partition by code. We don't only want to partition by code, but also by power. So we want to partition by code in power. So if every if in one code it starts with a new power, then we also want to give it a new number. And we also want to order by code and power. And here in the table, we also order it by code and power. Okay, so let's look at this result one more time. Okay, so now we have row number one, two, and then it already starts again at one. So why do we have one, two here? So we have the code one, it's the same code, but the code is seven times, but we have also the same power. And we have it two times power one and power one here. And so we have also the row number, number one and number two. So why is that a good thing now that we partition it exactly in this way? Because in the end we want for every want that has the same code and the same power, we only want to give out the one with the minimum coins needed. So we have to have at this position number one, we want to have the one, the want with the minimum coins needed. So right now at position number one, what do we have? Coins needed 5384. And at position number two, we have 2701. So we have actually the lower coins, which we want at the number one, we have at the number two. So we have kind of have to switch that around so that we have the minimum number of coins needed at the number one position for the same power. And if we then say we want to join it with the other table, but only take the ones that has the row number one, and we have uh, we have uh, corrected this with the minimum number of code in, in the top, in the one, then we actually get exactly the rows that we want to have in our result set. And that's why the row number function is so powerful. So what do we want? We want the minimum number rows at the first position. So we order it by code power, but also by coins needed, coins needed. And it, we can write here as scanning, but it is as scanning anyway. So you can write it or not, uh, that's the default value for it. And as scanning, as we know, means from the lowest to the highest. So now we have the lowest at the top, at the number one spot, exactly what we want for our row number. So let's run this again and look one less time in Excel. So let's copy this code. Okay, so now we can see one, two row number, yes, and then it starts a new one because it is a new power for the code. And now we have coins needed 2701 before 5384. So we have it exactly how we need it. We have at number one, we have the minimum coins needed for this power. And then we know we definitely going to choose this one and this is going to be in the output set. And now we have, we can see again here at one, two, three, for example, we also have uh, three times the same power with the same code, this time code two. And we want again the minimum number of coins needed. And this is 1467, as we can see here, it's lower than the other two numbers. And now we only want the first, no, only the row with the row number one. So now this is prepared perfectly in order to join it with our other table. So now what are we gonna do is, we're gonna put this in a with clause, in a with statement, and we are gonna call this min coins, because we figured out the minimum number of coins for each power for every want. And this is gonna be our first table that we later are gonna join with the other one. And now we had our non-evil ones in the ones property table. And we're gonna put this one down below. And the order by, we can actually not have it anymore here in this table, but it doesn't really matter for now. And we can only order it here in the last one, but this is all really what we need. So what do we want to get out? So first, what, how should the joins look like? So now we have the ones property. We have to join it with our min coins that we just created here. So join, so once property, we give it an abbreviation WP, join min coins, we call it MC on MC. So what was the common column? It was the code. So both have the column code, MC code, 
equals WP code. And, and now comes the very important condition, row number should be equal to one. So where is evil is equal zero, we already have it in wand's property. So now let's look at the output columns. What do we need? We need the ID of the wand. And okay, we get the ID. Then what do we need? We need the age of the wand. Yes. We need the coins needed. And we need the power of the wand. Okay, so we have all that. And we take this one away. Where is evil equals zero? That is also correct. And now we still have to order. Order by what? By power descending we should order and also by age descending. Okay, so now we have our min coins where we figured out with the help of the row number which one has the minimum number of galleons to buy it. Then we joined it with the row number equals one and we also put the order by clause. So let's see if this works now. And there you go. We find we have the solution again. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I see you in the next one.